So I'd also explain about deep sleep drive. And I'm gonna start by explaining that um, whereas the first system is all about timing, and it means that not only do we have to have regularity, but we should probably do things at the optimal time. And I'll explain later what would be optimal for them. And I'm gonna do that by actually figuring it out from their sleep diary. The second thing, the system is a compensatory system. It's actually the system that makes up for lost sleep. And it doesn't work at all like the way that it's explained in the media about banks and, and, and whatever else. It, it's not like that at all. We make up for lost sleep with deep sleep, not with more sleep. And I think that's really tricky because when we have a bad night's sleep, if the next night we don't sleep longer, we think that we haven't made up for it. And that's not the way it works at all. So um, this system monitors how much activity and how much rest is in a 24 hour period. And it, during periods of great rest and inactivity, you have less of a drive for deep sleep, you'll get less deep sleep. And during periods of less time in bed, more activity, so really poor sleep, for example, then you would compensate the next night with greater amounts of deep sleep, which you may or may not perceive. So you don't have a great sense of whether or not your body is taking care of you. Um, and I think that's what happens with insomnia is people lose faith in their body's um, ability um, or function to, to take care of yourself. So how does this system work? So from the moment you are awake and out of bed and active, you're building a drive for deep sleep. You're literally accumulating a chemical that leads to greater sleepiness um, after a sufficient amount of time out of bed and active. So think of it like this, and this is how I explain it to clients. Um, think of it like you have to blow up a balloon. And with the more time you spend out of bed and the more activity you have, that you're going to be able to go to bed with this big, full, taut balloon. When you get into bed and, and initiate sleep, it's like you let go of that balloon. And when you let go of the balloon, all that air is expelling. Now, in actuality, it's not air, it's a chemical that's dispersed, um, that is built up um, over the course of the day. And the release of that balloon is associated with deep sleep, whether you are aware of it or not. Um, that's where we can measure it. So um, if we want to have a strong drive for deep sleep, um, then we need to be awake and out of bed a sufficient amount of time. So negative behaviors for this system will be spending increased time in bed. What do people with insomnia do? They spend more time in bed, right? Sometimes as a strategy, like I'm going to um, cast a wider net of opportunity. I'll go to bed a little early or I'll just, I'll turn off the alarm and just lay in a little bit more. I'll try and nap. I'll rest, I'm exhausted, I'm, I'm tired. Um, I, I better cut back, I, I won't do my workout today, I need to conserve my energy. So all of these things will actually send a message to that system, oh, you need less deep sleep. Okay, so the next night, it won't compensate for the poor night any longer. So we wanna be able to work with our system and send it the right message. And that's what we're going to do. So I'm gonna give you an example.